Welcome everybody. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Zorin OS 8 and it's the release candidate. So this hasn't been released just yet, but you can actually get it at their website. Um, I got the download link from DistroWatch. Zorin OS is geared towards people who would like to uh, transition away from Windows and use a familiar uh, desktop environment. So you see this is the uh, uh, probably photos from uh, 7 and uh, this is how it looks in the upcoming uh, version 8. So I'm going to start uh, counterclockwise from this little gear icon. Um, since I'm looking at this for the first time this might be a somewhat long review. So we've got our shutdown features, our uh, screen lock, system settings, uh, Zorin help. I'm going to assume this takes you to a website. Okay, cool. Forums. That works. We've got um, a calendar, volume control, and music control. Zorin OS is based off of Ubuntu 13.10. So many of the uh, applications and features you're going to see are um, redesigned versions that are intended for Ubuntu. I really like this panel. It's really nice. I changed my keyboard to Macintosh since I'm running on a Macintosh keyboard. So let's take a look at this panel. On settings, okay. This is not a traditional GNOME panel or anything like that but actually a dock. So we've got uh, our applications that are pinned here. Uh, music playback program for managing podcasts and music. You can launch the application on right click, unpin the application, even look at the properties for, for it. So that's very similar to uh, what you can do in uh, Windows 7, which I uh, regretfully use at work. So my guess is that pinning applications is exactly the same. So let me open up Thunderbird really quick. The system's running a little bit sluggish because I'm trying to uh, grab the video uh, capture with as much uh, accuracy as possible. So it's slowing down my system just a little bit. I want the compositing to show up correctly. So right click on this and it looks like you can pin the applications and then oh cool drag them into position just like you would in Windows 7 all right nice okay so you've got the Windows 7 stylized menu uh, menu you can go into the dock preferences and make changes whoops I'm sorry that's for the dock let's right click on the menu itself so you could actually change the color. Let's go ahead and do um, dark just for the heck of it. Let's see how this looks. Oops, I guess I have to hit OK first. Menu needs to restart now. Sure. Let's see what happens. Not too shabby. I think I prefer the. Uh, the original, so I'm going to switch that back really quick. Again, I clicked on the wrong portion of the dock. Let's go back into Preferences, go over to Zorin OS, hit OK, hit Yes. Do a little dance, and it should change back. All right, let's find out what kind of uh, files. Maybe it's a version of Nautilus. Not really sure. Not familiar with it. Got that back. All right, let's take a look at the menu. So under accessories, we've got an archive manager, uh, disk, files, font viewer, screenshot application, terminal, and text editor, which is GE edit. What's really nice about this is it's not telling you the name of the application, but more so what the application does. 
which is uh, very useful if you're new to Linux. That way you have a general idea of what to expect from the application. Um, if you haven't used Linux before, you might not know what some of the uh, applications do, like transmission, for instance, can be a very vague term for archive man um, or uh, t torrent management. Graphics includes a GIMP image editor, LibreOffice Draw, move through these a little bit faster, internet applications, very similar to the KDE kickoff menu, sound and video, open shot editor, there's a webcam program, I don't have a webcam attached, Office software, LibreOffice, okay, well let's open up LibreOffice and uh, see what it looks like in Zorn OS. Okay, very much similar to how it looks in other distributions. Nice, not bad. Pin this application. Okay, what else we got? We have Wine, Play on Linux. So you can go ahead and install the uh, PC ver or the Windows version of SteamOS to play some of the Windows-based games if you like, as well as uh, Steam itself. Let's take a look at some of the system tools. Zorin Theme Changer. Okay. Oh, nice. So you can switch quick switch to a dark theme. <laughs> oh, check out that effect. That is nice. Very impressive. So it actually goes in and, and does some of the work for you. Nice. You know, a while back they had a um, um, Commodore USA was trying to work on a, a desktop interface based off of uh, Linux Mint. And this is pretty much what they were probably trying to shoot for. Um, they didn't get very successful, but... You know, they were getting there. Then the uh, the company folded, but oh, I kind of wish I got one of their Commodore 64 uh, reboots. Those things were really cool. All right. Do want a look changer? It's a look changer. Oh, you got to be kidding me. So you got a Windows 7 version. Okay. A Windows XP version. Not bad. And of course, a uh, GNOME 2 version. That's really cool if you, whoa, not too shabby. Got some compiz, compiz effects going on in the background. I have to say, this looks a heck of a lot better than my Windows 7 uh, theme at work. Would certainly would not mind using this instead. What else do we got here? Different ways of looking at everything. Let's open up some more applications, shall we? So under sound and video, let's open up OpenShot and see what it looks like. Just as you would expect. Places. My computer. Soren Software Center. I think you'll notice when this loads in a moment that it is simply a rebranded version of the Ubuntu Software Center. So all the faults and all the <laughs> benefits of the Ubuntu Software Center built into one. And uh, it is being a little non-responsive, but that's because I'm dominating my CPU cores again for this uh, video uh, Work. So let me give that a moment to refresh. That is so nice, though. Huh. Yep, of course it did. And again, that was my fault. I should be freeing up a little bit of space here. You see, I just installed this and ran a few uh, updates, so there isn't much going on around here. 
take a quick look at the Zorn website while we're at it. I believe they offer a, uh, a paid version. Yes. So if you get the um, Zorn Plus, it seems like you can get access to more pre-installed applications, probably some support as well. Free premium, help humanity. Oh, whoa, that was cool. Let's see what happens if I go over here and uh, try to type in compiz. Yeah, okay, so that's what it's using too. Mm -hmm. That's what it's using for all these effects. So that means if you're familiar with compiz, compiz and some of the effects, like being able to change desktops like that, or like this, nice. A lot of eye candy. It's really nice, really neat. And uh, maybe this is what uh, a lot of people wished Ubuntu's uh, Unity would have looked like. It's pretty. It is actually pretty responsive. If I wasn't dominating the CPUs, let's take a quick look at some of the back, uh, the theming. Let's take a look at the background here. Some background artwork that changes throughout the day. I believe this is from GNOME. This is, must be running a uh, version um, GNOME in the background. But their logo kind of reminds me of uh, Zerg from Toy Story. <laughs> that is cool. And then some photographs. Neat. All right, so before I empty this uh, or end this review, let's see if we can get some more information. Uh, let me pull up HTOP. You guys can see I'm dominating my CPU cores on this right now, but even with the uh, screen capture, I'm taking in about 1,100 uh, megs. On boot, this is more around uh, 500. Um, so you could probably run this with as little as one gigabyte of RAM. Probably be better off, though, uh, running it with um, at least two gigabytes. It's quite something. I have to say I'm really impressed. Well, anyway, th thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.